Hello and welcome. This is World of Wastewater. This is part 10 in a series going over a wastewater exam that you can find a link to in the description below. If you're following along, these questions are numbers 45 through 50. If your family and friends still think flushable wipes are flushable, no matter how many times you tell them otherwise, click that like button and subscribe. With that said, let's get started. What unit is used to quantify fecal coliform results? A. MPN B. BOD C. Milligrams per gram D. Milliliter per liter The answer is A. MPN Coliform bacteria are a broad group of microorganisms that are able to ferment lactose within 48 hours at 35 degrees Celsius. Coliform bacteria are found in the digestive tracts of humans and other warm-blooded animals. This group of bacteria is further classified into two major groups, non-fecal and fecal coliforms. Fecal coliforms are able to grow at higher temperatures, up to 45 degrees Celsius. This is a major distinction between the two groups. Testing for coliforms is important for human health. If they are present in water, there's a chance for fecal contamination. Coliforms in and of themselves are not harmful, but are indicative of other harmful pathogenic bacteria. There are two methods used for counting the total amount of coliforms and the amount of fecal coliforms present in a sample. The first method is most probable number, MPN. The second is called membrane filter. The most probable number method is much more common. The most probable number method is a statistical estimate of the number of bacteria needed to produce a specific laboratory response. The response may be in the form of the production of gas in a fermentation tube or biochemical reaction with an indicator compound in the media. I encourage you to look more into MPN in the multiple fermentation tube method before taking your exam. Which chemical can be used in treating water for phosphorus removal? A. Aluminum chloride B. Ferrous sulfate C. Sodium hydroxide D. Sodium bisulfite The answer is B. Ferrous sulfate Controlling phosphorus discharges from our treatment plants is a key factor in preventing eutrophication of surface waters. Phosphorus can be found in two forms, organic and inorganic. The majority of phosphorus found in municipal wastewater tends to be in the inorganic form. This type of phosphorus can be removed through the process of chemical precipitation or alternatively by biological phosphorus removal. Iron salts such as ferrous sulfate or ferric chloride are commonly used to remove phosphorus. Some treatment plants may instead use alum, which is an aluminum salt, or calcium. They all do the same thing, precipitate phosphorus, but through different chemical mechanisms. Using a coagulant such as these can increase sludge production by up to 40%. It should be known that the alkalinity of the water influences the effectiveness of phosphorus precipitation. Given the data on screen, calculate the MCRT. A, four days, B, eight days, C, 12 days, D, 14 days. The answer is D, 14 days. Grab something to write with, paper and a calculator, because it's time for a math breakdown. MCRT, or mean cell residence time, also known as sludge retention time, is the amount of time in days that solids or bacteria are maintained in the activated sludge process. This equation is one of the more intimidating formulas that an operator must know. However, I will show you that this equation, when broken down, really isn't anything special and does not require us to learn anything that we as operators haven't already learned up to this point. As you can see, the top half of this equation consists of two mass formulas added together, and the bottom half are two loading rate formulas added together. We've already used these equations in previous questions, and these equations are ones that you should know off the top of your head as an operator. In the following steps, we're going to solve each part within the MCRT formula by going from left to right and from top to bottom. In this first step, we'll use the mass formula to solve for pounds of sludge in the aeration system. We do this by taking the aeration volume, 4 million gallons, multiplying it by the MLSS, which is 2,700 milligrams per liter, 
and multiplying that by the pounds per gallon conversion factor, 8.34. This gives us an answer of 90,072 pounds in our ration. For the second step, we're going to do the exact same as the first step. However, we're instead using the SEC clarifier volume. So let's plug these in. 0 0.240 million gallons times 2,700 milligrams per liter times 8.34 pounds per gallon, giving us an answer which when rounded is 5,404 pounds in the clarifiers. For the third step, we're simply combining our last two answers. This will give us the number we will put in for the top half of our MCRT equation. 90,072 pounds plus 5,404 pounds equals 95,476 pounds. This is the total amount of bugs in our aeration and clarifier systems. Next, we move on to solving the bottom half of the MCRT formula. In this next step, we'll be using the loading rate formula to figure out how many pounds per day of wasted activated sludge is leaving the plant. We do this by taking the WAS flow of 0.1 MGD, multiplying by the WAS TSS valve of 8,000 mg per liter, and multiplying that by our conversion factor, 8.34 pounds per gallon. This gives us an answer of 6,672 pounds per day of WAS. In the fifth step, we'll solve for how many solids are being lost per day through our effluent. In a properly working treatment plant, this number should always be very low. We do this by taking our influent flow of 5 MGD, multiplying it by our effluent TSS, which is 3.5 mg per liter, and multiplying that by our conversion factor of 8.34 pounds per gallon, giving us an answer of 145.95, which we will round to 146 pounds per day of effluent solids. Now we will combine our answers from steps 4 and 5. 6,672 pounds per day plus 146 pounds per day equals 6,818 pounds per day of solids leaving our treatment plant. This will go on the bottom half of our MCRT formula. In step seven, we bring it all together. We take our answer from step three, 95,476 pounds, and divide it by our answer from step six, 6,818 pounds per day. Pounds will cancel out, leaving our answer to be 14 days. This is the length of time bugs are staying in our system. The presence of large amounts of filter flies could be caused by any of the following except A. Excessive hydraulic loading B. Insufficient spray reaching the outside wall of the trickling filter C. Tall grass and weeds present around the trickling filter D. Plugged spray orifices or nozzles The answer is A, excessive hydraulic loading. Filter flies prefer when water is not moving on top of a trickling filter or when vegetation has built up around it. This creates good habitat for them. Keeping water flowing on a trickling filter will prevent them from propagating. As you can see, our answer is actually one of the troubleshooting solutions in order to prevent or remove filter flies. The pH range for optimal growth of nitrifying bacteria is A, 8.5 to 9.5, B, 6.5 to 7.5, C, 5.5 to 6.5, D, 7.5 to 8.5. Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter are the two types of bacteria that are vital to the nitrification process, and I recommend you remember those names. These bacteria are pH sensitive, so maintaining a pH of 7.5 to 8.5 for your nitrification process is important for proper ammonia removal. If you haven't already, check out the previous video in this series, part nine, which goes over the nitrification process further. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the others on this channel. If you wanna help us make more great content for operators, there's a link to the World of Wastewater PayPal in the description below. See you next time on World of Wastewater.